This is VK6 Amateur Radio News with News West for Sunday the 16th of October 2022. Today is the History of Amateur Radio edition and we take a look at newspaper stories about amateur radio in the early 1930s and we give some last minute information about Perth Tech and remind you to get yourself registered now for Perth Tech if you think of attending because it's going to be the best show in town. Are you unsure of when you're allowed to use your 2 by one call sign? And who calls a contest a contest? We've got the answers for you. You'll hear all this and more on News West, where amateur radio news is exactly that. News West can be heard on air, online and on demand. Visit our website vk6.net to find out how. I got an email only minutes before I published News West from Keith, VK6 EME, and Keith said he's been contacted by Cameron Newham, the son of Neville Newham, who passed away on the 2nd of September. Neville was VK6, Victor Uniform, and was 93 years old when he went silent key. The funeral is at Karakata on Thursday the 27th of October at 2.30pm. His son lives in the UK and he won't be coming to Perth for the funeral but has asked any amateurs who knew Neville to attend if possible. It's likely given his age that the numbers will be low. So the family would appreciate anybody who, who knew Neville being able to attend the funeral. That's at 2.30pm on the 27th of October and it's at Karakata. So Vale Neville, VK6, Victor Uniform, Silent Key and I wish his family all the best at this time. Perth Tech is almost here. It's next week, and there's something you need to do if you're thinking of coming along. The first thing you need to do, if you haven't already done so, is to register. Prior registration is required, and if you haven't registered, don't bother rocking up. Another thing is to review your registration. As you're aware, Perth Tech is in four parts, and you can attend any or all of the info sessions. Firstly, there's provision for parking your camper or caravan on site. It's not a caravan park and only some sites are within reach of electricity. So if you have a medical need for a powered site, please let us know in advance. Email perthtech at vk6.net. If you haven't booked a site and have changed your mind and want to bring your camper or van, just go to the registration page at vk6.net to book and pay for it. Camping is available Friday and Saturday nights at $12 per night. This is a pass-on cost. Camping is self-catering. Secondly, Friday afternoon evening will be a loosely structured event and we're all billing it as an amateur radio play date. It's self-catering with takeaway food available close by and pub meals 10 minutes away at the Noble Falls Tavern. The big event is on Saturday, commencing at 8.30. That's an early start, but that's because we have a huge program to work our way through. Your $20 registration fee is a token payment towards the cost of catering. That's morning and afternoon teas and lunch. The actual cost is nearly double that. At the conclusion of the day of Perth Tech presentations, there's a sundowner, which is simply a social get-together. The bar will be open for you to buy drinks, and there will be a light meal. The cost for the sundowner is $15, and again, if you didn't book for the sundowner and have changed your mind, go to vk6.net and register. There are also two free Sunday workshops, actually four if you count the three VKFF activations that are happening, but we'll talk about those elsewhere in the program. Dan, VK6 NAD, will follow up his Saturday presentation with an informal workshop on Sunday morning at the Perth Tech venue at the Gigi Gannup Recreation Club. Dan will be doing a show and tell with his VFO enabled rock controlled radios. Also on Sunday, Paul and Maria, after having talked to Perth Tech about the VKFF program with the assistance of Hans, VK6 XN, and Phil, VK6 ADF will be taking hands out into the field to activate parks. Three parks will be activated at the same time. And here's how it works. Meet at the Perth Tech venue in Gidgey Gallup at 12.30 Perth time. The address 1990 2J Road. Paul, VK5 PAS, will take you to the Wallyunga National Park Lookout, VKFF 0516. This is on the south or 2J roadside of the Avon Valley. Hands VK6XN will take a group to the Bilu National Park VKFF 0632. This is the park surrounding Mundaran Weir. Phil VK6ADF will take you to the John Forest National Park 
VKFF0250. There is a short registration of interest form at the VK6.net website. Please fill it out if you plan to attend. It's possible, particularly at the John Forrest Park venue, for you to meet on site. I'll leave a comment field in the form. If you decide at the last minute to come along and have not registered, just rock up at the Perth Deck site at 12.30. I suggest you rock up at the Gigi Town site a bit earlier and try out the food options, bakery, takeaway foods, etc. For those already familiar with VKFF, please consider heading out into a VKFF park yourself to make a park-to-park -park contact with the VK6 activators or simply work as a chaser from your home station. Details are on the website vk6.net. This item is from the West Australian newspaper Perth, Wednesday the 6th of July 1932 and the heading is Amateur Radio, its value in an emergency. A prominent feature of the search for the German aviators in the northwest was the value of amateur radio in emergency. There seems little doubt that Mr Tom Martin, the young amateur operator on the launch from the government networks, realising his inability to communicate with his base station on his authorised wavelength when Ned Jonker's seaplane was found, knew that if he transmitted his messages via the amateur wave band, keen experimenters' ears located possibly a thousand miles away would hear him and give to those in authority the news of the endeavours and progress of those in the launch. He was right, his messages were heard, and their receipt and delivery possibly saved expense and much delay and inconvenience in connection with the use of amateur radio in an emergency. Western Australia has an enviable record so far as the Commonwealth is concerned. During the search for Sir Charles Kingsford Smith when he was lost with the Southern Cross in the northwest, Mr Jimmy Austin, who was VK6SA, flew to Derby with a little transmitter and established contact with stations all over the Commonwealth. Again, there was the finding of the airmen Smith and Shears out from Wyndham by Mr Don Nock, VK6NK, who flashed to all parts of Australia news of their safety. Later, when the police expedition went to the Rawlinson Ranges in connection with the alleged murder of white men by natives, it was an amateur, VK6SA, who, with a low-powered transmitter and receiver, operating on a special wavelength, kept the police department in touch with the party in a country fraught with dangers, hardship and danger of death from thirst. One has only to turn over in the mind the history of amateur radio from this aspect, the world throughout, to realise that in the majority of cases the value of amateur radio in an emergency has been proved by practical application. At the time of the New Zealand earthquake when all other methods of communication failed, a young New Zealand amateur sat with his salvaged apparatus among the debris of his home, calmly handling Red Cross and other messages for assistance as if it were an everyday occurrence. During the Mississippi floods and the Florida disasters, American amateurs handled the emergency communications in the stricken areas. During the Havana earthquake, when the cable and radio stations were demolished, Cuban amateurs still maintained communication, in this case at the expense of the life of one of them, who was killed by falling masonry while operating his transmitter. And last but not least is the case of the late Mr Eric Eichwald, operator of the plane Dallas Spirit in the famous Doll flight a few years ago from San Francisco to Honolulu. Young Eichwald knew that the plane was doomed and far above the Pacific Ocean in a raging storm, the plane going into a tailspin, he jocularly remarked via the Morse code to the hundreds of amateurs listening to his signals that he was going for his morning dip. When the plane and its aerial hit the water, he carried on and did not desist until the Pacific claimed him. So it will always be when disaster occurs and at other times if amateur radio stations are required to assist, they will be found ready. This is News West, your amateur radio news on VK6 ARN, originating on the News West linked repeater network and HF relays. Unless your amateur radio world is under a rock somewhere, you'd be aware that Perth Tech is next weekend, the 21st to the 23rd of October. You may also be aware that Perth Tech is operated by WA Amateur Radio News, the same crowd that brings you News West. Next Friday, we'll be really busy setting up the Perth Tech venue to make it look like we had some sort of plan. Because of this, something's got to give, and that, my friends, will be the deadline for news items to go into News West 
for next Sunday, the 23rd of October. The closing time for contributions will be noon on Thursday. That's noon on Thursday, the 20th of October, for early closure for contributions to News West. This is News West from VK6 ARN. Produced by amateurs for amateurs, purely about the hobby of amateur communication and experimentation. This item is from the Daily News, Perth, Monday 16th of March, 1931, from a regular column called The Broadcaster, with the heading, Sunspots and Radio, Better Conditions. Since the time that shortwave transmissions came to the fore, much research work has been done, and frequencies here there too held to be useless for broadcasting or communication at all have been wonderfully efficient. By the time that shortwave transmission is another 10 years old, scientists and experimenters should know considerably more of it. Taken all round, last year was a poor year for international communication. Why should this be so? Amateur experimenters in America have developed an interesting theory which would appear to have some support in fact, although time will require to provide the confirmation. These experimenters assert that apart from the daily, even hourly and seasonal changes in the condition of the atmospheric conditions, there is a change which takes place over a much longer period. Casting around for an explanation of the fact that conditions last year were, generally speaking, as poor as they have been for some years, they arrived at the conclusion that as 1930 was the maximum period of the sunspot activity in the cycle, that here, possibly, was the cause of the radio minimum period. It is believed that this sunspot cycle takes 11 years to complete, and if this is so, a repetition of the conditions of 1930 should be evidence in 1941. Running parallel with the sunspot theory is one concerning wavelength, or to be more accurate, frequency. Long distance communications in 1923 were made on 100 meters with practically the same power used today and with less efficient apparatus. Then, in the two or three succeeding years, it was found that while 100 meters was more or less useless, communication between the same points could be carried out on 80, 40, and still later on 20 meters. During the last couple of years, there have been increasingly difficult, apart from congestion of transmitters on the air, in maintaining the same contacts on the lower wavelengths. It is because the atmospheric conditions have changed the peak of their movement and are coming around again in their cycle. That is the belief of today. Of course, it will take another 11 years to even confirm the experiences of the last 11 years. But the fact that many of the amateurs are creeping back to 80 meters because of the contacts they can make there would appear to offer some justification for the theory. If it is so, 1933 should find us back onto the 100 meters and making international communications which a few years previous were unthinkable. What joy there will be too for the amateur transmitter with a phone set. The higher frequencies provide the amateur with many matters of wonderment and opportunity for excellent research, provided adequate observations and notes are kept. This is where the value of a properly kept logbook comes in. If it's not amateur radio, it's not amateur radio news. News West is dedicated to amateur radio for amateur radio operators. This is VK6 ARN and I'm Mark, VK4 MHQ. This one's a transcript from an interview with Les Mitchell, Golf 3 Bravo Hotel Kilo. Some of you might recognise that one. And he's credited with being the founder of Jamboree on the Air. And this interview was in October 2000. Les became a silent key on the 6th of October 2014, a couple of weeks before Jamboree on the Air that year. His legacy, Jamboree on the Air, continues right through to now, more than 60 years. And it is the largest annual activity organised by the World Organisation of Scouting Movements. And Les said, Little did I think when I drew up the plans and rules for the first event in 1958 that its popularity would increase and spread around the world. Even more astonishing is the fact that after all this time it still holds its popularity and now has a participation of some half a million scouts and guides in over 100 countries involving some 10,000 amateur radio stations. In fact, it has become the largest international scout event ever. Have I been aware of any significant changes in the event since it started? Possibly the most notable change to me has been that in 1958 so few members of the scout movement were qualified radio amateurs that we had to call on the help of local amateur radio clubs to organise and run stations taking part in JOTA. 
Over the years, scouts taking part in the event have become so interested in the hobby that they've become radio amateurs themselves and a significant number of Jota operators today are members of the movement. This of course makes participation in the event far more interesting for those at both ends of a contact. There are two other significant changes which have vastly improved the event. One is the change from amplitude modulation to single sideband. This has led to more efficient signals, enabling one to make contacts further afield using only the often simple temporary aerial arrays erected during Jota. The second improvement is the miniaturisation of the equipment. In 1958 a single station consisted of several large sized and heavy pieces of equipment, mostly home constructed, which would fill a car boot and took a long time to install. Today one can carry a complete station in a small suitcase and assemble a station within a few minutes. It's only the aerial which still needs the same amount of installation time as it did in the past. Finally, Jota is great fun, but there is one simple point you must remember. Even the most efficient communication system in the world is useless if you have nothing to say. If you put nothing into the event, you may get nothing out of it. Jota is your chance to speak to scouts and guides over the horizon. Silence makes no friends. Good radio scouting contacts. And again, that was Les. Golf 3 Bravo Hotel Kilo in an interview in October the year 2000, so that's 22 years ago. This is VK6ARN and you're listening to News West. Hi, I'm Paul, VK5 Papa Alpha Sierra and I'm one of the speakers at Perth Tech. I'll be talking about the Worldwide Flora and Fauna Program and Operating Portable. I'm looking forward to seeing you at Perth Tech. Daily News, Perth, Monday 16th of March 1931 with the heading Radio and Earthquake. Soon after the disastrous earthquake in New Zealand, I said in this column that when the details of the rescue work were made known to the world, it would be found that the amateur transmitters of ZL, as New Zealand is known among them, had played their part well. Recent advice shows that when all other avenues of communication were disorganised, it was the amateur who filled the breach and sent through the messages that meant so much to the country. At the same time as two ships in Napier Harbour were endeavouring to make contact with other commercial stations in the Dominion, Mr. Hans of ZL2FF in Gisborne was working with Mr. Hills of ZL2BE in Hastings. These two stations told of the damage wrought and as the signals between the two stations started to fade, the Gisborne amateur sought other communication and successfully linked up with an amateur in Australia and by these means the news was known in Australia much earlier than in New Zealand. Another transmitter Mr. J. E. Tyler of Napier returned home to find his transmitter in pieces. He repaired it and after salvaging a battery from another part of town, got on the air and in communication with an amateur in Christchurch and later with Mr. S. Perkins of ZL2GK, Mr. Perkins informed the Wellington Telegraph office of his communication and an operator was sent out to relieve him. For many hours, Tyler maintained a communication channel acting as the link between the stricken area and the outside world until his batteries gave out. Next day, the post office came to his aid and provided him with a power supply. In another part of the stricken area, two amateurs in Mrs. Green and Dixon operated portable transmitters in the interests of the Red Cross Society. While the passing of the first two days, the pioneer work had been done and the young men concerned had lived up to the best traditions of the amateur transmitter. Something that happens in amateur radio, and thankfully so, is a steady influx of newcomers to the hobby. Something else that happens in amateur radio is a seemingly equal outflow of people leaving the hobby. That's a whole other discussion, and one worth having at another time. It's pretty important for the hobby to retain newcomers, to nurture and encourage them to grow in the hobby. One way we can do that is to make them feel welcome, informed and included in this great hobby. Next week, News West turns its focus on newcomers to amateur radio with the new Amateurs Edition. How was your entry into the hobby? Would you like to tell your story? Our email address is newswest at vk6.net. 
Talk to us. On HF, VHF and UHF, via the VK6 linked repeater network and online, this is News West from VK6 ARN. You know, I've been told by a couple of people that they're tired of hearing about amateur radio politics. Not that they disagree with anything that one side or the other have said, but they're just tired of hearing about it. Well, we've got a chance to talk about this and discuss it at Perth Tech. We're going to have two presidents. We're going to have the president of the Wireless Institute of Australia, and we're going to have the president of the Radio Amateur Society of Australia. And you might be very surprised to learn that those two speak to each other frequently. But that's not without its problems because there are people on the Wireless Institute board who don't want that to happen. They don't want anyone to talk to RASA. They think that RASA shouldn't exist. What you've heard of as the war being raged by RASA against the Wireless Institute is actually the other way around. But anyway, let's hear it from the horse's mouth. Come along to Perth Tech. Just register and turn up. If you've got an opinion, even if you don't have an opinion, or if you want to confirm what your opinions are, come along and listen to what those guys have got to say out of the horse's mouth and then we can stop this rubbish about other people rubbishing people denying the existence of people bullying people there's a lot of bullying going on just come along and listen hear the truth and see what you can do to make your own mind up and not believe what the very small but noisy bunch of people are telling you what their version of the truth is because it's vastly different come along and listen come and learn Perth Tech is on this coming weekend Register. It'll cost you 20 bucks for the day and you'll get double that in food. Hello, this is Chris with news about regulations and the use of 2x1 contest call signs. There has been some confusion in the VK community regarding the RASA DX contest and the use of 2x1 contest call signs. Some operators have been bullied and harassed over their use of the 2x1 contest call signs. RASA was instrumental in negotiating and gaining approval from the ACMA for 2x1 contest call signs. We have maintained a close working relationship with the ACMA and AMC throughout the implementation of these call signs. Unfortunately, someone in the amateur community chose to formalise a complaint with the ACMA over the use of 2x1 contest call signs in the RASA contest. Following a preliminary inquiry by the ACMA, we understand they have decided not to investigate the matter further. RASA has reviewed the complaint and sought further clarification from the ACMA's website. Information from the ACMA's website has confirmed our understanding that there are no regulatory restrictions governing amateur radio contesting and the use of 2 by one contest call signs. ACMA advised that, and I quote, in general, the ACMA's position is that non-regulatory administrative policy the management of aspects of amateur radio that are not related directly, directly to a statutory function should be guided by the consensus view within the amateur radio community. And that's from the ACMA's website. So, in a nutshell, those of you with a 2 by one contest call sign are welcome to use it in any contest. Let's hope that this puts the matter to bed and we can all get on with enjoying the hobby. I tell you what folks, we've had a real healthy number of people registered for Perth Tech. I'm pleased with the response. However, the nature of the venue is that we can comfortably handle more people. So don't hold back. Don't miss out. You know you want to do it. Gidjigana isn't as far away as people think. It's closer to the CBD than Butler. When you hear our next News West episode, Perth Tech will be mostly done and dusted. So we're reminding you that you have until midnight tonight, that's Sunday the 16th of October, to register for Perth Tech or to add one of the optional items such as camping or the sundowner. The expression of interest form for VKFF workshops will remain open. You can do all of these things at our VK6.net website. So don't hold back. VK6.net. And there's a Perth Tech tab. Choose it. See you there. Good morning. It's me again, Roy VK6 X-Ray Victor with this week's helpline the 16th of October 2022. Mac, VK6 Mike, Mike is looking for your help please. He's got a heap of coax cable he needs to get rid of either go to a good home or to the dump. He has LDF 550 and there's also LDF 4-50 and uh, in lengths of uh, 24, 24, 30, 40 and 58 metres. 
not all ha or not all have ends fitted with connectors, but uh, some salvage ones might be able to be fitted by anyone who is in sufficiently patient. And Mac says if no one wants to take it away, it's free, money back guarantee on free. And if you want to take it away, it's yours. Otherwise, it goes to the uh, big receptacle in the ground, it goes to the dump. So uh, give Mac a call, 0417 977 765. That's his mobile number, 0417 977 765. Or the email address is Mike Mike at iinet.net.au. Hurry up and get it. It's all going for free. Money back guarantee. Next item comes from Wayne, VK6 Victor Echo. He has a 16 element Yagi folder driven element on a 2.5 meter long by 25 millimeter diameter boom. $30. Very low VSWR across 430 megahertz band. And the check with his MFJ made from junk analyzer. Contact um, Wayne 0450. One four zero one five five. I'll say again zero four five zero one four zero one five five. That's Wayne VK six Victor Echo. That's all I have for you today. Seven three for me. If you have any items for next week, please contact me. Uh, VK six X Ray Victor at bigpond dot com, or finding that Roy dot Watkins at bigpond dot com. Both addresses should work now. And this is what me going clear. Cheers seven three from Roy VK six X Ray Victor. Thanks for tuning in to News West. There's lots happening behind the scenes to make Perth Tech run smoothly. Registrations for Perth Tech close at midnight tonight, and that's assuming that you're listening on Sunday the 16th of October. Our website is vk6.net and the news team can be reached by emails to newswest at vk6.net. Please remember the early deadline for contributions to News West for next weekend's edition. We need your contributions by noon on Thursday the 20th of October and earlier if possible, much earlier. The earlier the better. And this weekend is Jamboree on the air and some people will still be at it so please support the kids. Simply get on air and make some noise. <laughs>